Good morning, everyone. In unison, good morning. Ready to proceed? Go ahead. We'll call our next witness, Major J. Jackson, to the stand. Come forward and raise your right hand, please. Face the clerk. I do. Please be seated. Thank you. State and spell your name for the record. Yes, J.D. Jackson. Spelled J-A-Y. Middle initial D. Jackson. J-A-C-K-S-O-N. Thank you. Thank you. May I proceed, Your Honor? You may. Sir, what is your current occupation? I am in the, I'm on active duty with the Army Reserve. How long have you been in the Army Reserve? Speak right in here, please. Thank you. I've been in the Army Reserve for 23 years, some of that active duty, some of that reserve part-time. Most recently you've been on active duty for what period? About five years. All right. Were you in Desert Storm? The first one, yes, sir, I was. And what position did you hold at that time? I ran a prisoner of war camp processing area. We ran enemy prison of war through the prisoner of war camp. In which country? In Saudi Arabia. Your current rank with the Army Reserves is what? Major. And what are your responsibilities? Currently I'm working in a command where we do mobilizations, we mobilize soldiers to go to war. Are you currently married to Janet Ventura Jackson? Yes, sir, I am. She has taken your name after your marriage, is that correct? That is correct. Do you have children together? We do. We have one. A little boy. And do you have other children living in your household? Yes, sir, we do. Three additional children. And they are who? Gavin, Star and Develin. When did you first meet Janet Arvizo? Back in July of 2002. How did you meet her? I was working one Saturday, and she came, she knocked on the door, and I, it's a secured facility, and I let her in. She had Star with her. All right. What were the children involved in at that time, the boys? There's a Sea Cadet Command right there that is for children between the ages of, say, 11 and 18 years old. And she was bringing her children there for that program. And both of them were involved, Star and Gavin? Yes, they were. All right, then that's how you met her. That is how I met them. And began dating after that? We talked. I met her. She said, I was sitting in the hallway and walked by her, and got into a conversation, and then, I got her phone number, I think. And then about a month later, we talked on the phone for about a month. And then a month later she was telling me that Gavin and Star were graduating from the Sea Cadet program, a little two-week training or one-week training. And so we decided that our first date we would go down there for that graduation, and we did. And you've been married how long now? Oh, goodness. May 29th will be one year. I'd like to direct your attention back to February of, 03, 2003. Okay. Will you tell us in what neighborhood you were living at that time? The Mid-Wilshire District, also known as Koreatown. And the street that you were living on was what? St. Andrew's Place. Was Janet Arvizo living with you at that time? She was. Was she living with you full-time at that time? No, she wasn't. She had a place over on Soto Street in East L.A. And the boys, where were they living? The same place. Both places. All right. Do you remember or do you recall where they were attending school at that time? Well, I don't know the name of the school, but it was in East L.A. And then because there was a lot of problems at that school, they were, you know, being pushed into getting into gangs, and there was some altercations, we thought it was a good idea if we enrolled them in John Burroughs, which is a real good school in the Mid-Wilshire district. And that was closer to your home, is that right? Yes, sir, it was. Very close. And did you do that? Sir? Did you do that, enroll them at John Burroughs? Yes, sir, we did. That is John Burroughs Middle School? That is John Burroughs Middle School. Was your address, then, on St. Andrew's Place the address that was used? That is correct. Yes, sir. Did Janet Arvizo maintain the Soto Street address? She did, sir. For what period of time? Through about November of, 04, I believe. 
Had you ever gone to Neverland? I've been to Neverland one time. And when was that? Do you recall? It was in. It was before November of, 02, so it was in the summer, I believe, of, 02. I was still living in West LA, and we were invited by Chris Tucker and his girlfriend, that they were having a little baby birthday party. Were you the only ones invited to Neverland for that occasion? Oh, no, sir. There was two busfuls of people. You met the bus where, do you recall? It was, you know, I think it was the Beverly Hills Hilton or something like that. It was one of the hotels in the local area. Did you spend the day at Neverland? Yes, sir, we did. Did you spend the night at Neverland? We left in the evening, late in the evening. And then returned back to Los Angeles? That is correct. How many people, approximately, to your recollection, attended that party? 40 or 50, maybe. Did you see Michael Jackson at any time during that occasion? No, sir, I did not. Had you ever met Michael Jackson? No, sir, not until today. At some point in early February of 2003, did you become aware of the fact that a documentary was being shown on television? I'm not sure if I knew at that moment, but I know that Janet received a call from either Michael or somebody in his entourage asking him to go to Miami. Asking her to go to Miami, and with the kids. Objection. Non-responsive. Move to strike. All strike after the word, moment. Quote. Did Janet Arvizo and the children go to Miami? Yes, they did. Do you know what prompted that? Um. Objection. Foundation and hearsay. Yes or no, does he know? I sustained the objection. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't hear. Do you know on what day they left for Miami? I just know approximately it was early February. Had there been any discussion in the household about Michael Jackson prior to going to Miami? No, sir, not really. Had there been any problems in the household that dealt in some fashion with either Neverland or Michael Jackson prior to Janet Arvizo going to Miami? No, sir, not at all. Objection. Vague. Overruled. The answer was, no, sir, not at all. Next question. Had there been any discussion about Michael Jackson prior to her going to Miami in your household, say, within a week or two prior to their departure? No, sir. And could you tell us approximately what percentage of the week Janet Arvizo was living at your home as opposed to her residence on Soto Street? Three or four days a week. Is that during the time that the kids were at school? Yes, sir. That's correct. Did Janet Arvizo have parents living in the Los Angeles area? Yes, sir. In the El Monte area. And had you visited their home on occasion? Yes, sir. And El Monte is where in Los Angeles County? I, I'm not sure exactly. I mean, it's in, El Monte is in, it's in, I mean, Los Angeles area. I'm not sure exactly how to, because I'm not from California. I really can't lay out where everything is from. We do hear an accent in your voice. Where are you from? Virginia. Is that where you grew up? Yes, sir, I did. Did you know in advance that Janet Arvizo and her children were going to be going to Miami? No, sir, I didn't. I received, excuse me one second. Go ahead. Janet just told me that she was going to my. Objection. Non-responsive. Move to strike. All strike after, I didn't. I'm sorry, I don't have the ability to read it. I'm not hearing everything you're saying at the moment. I'm sorry. The question was, did you know in advance that Janet Arvizo and her children were going to be going to Miami? No, sir, I didn't. Then after that I struck his answer. When did you first learn that they were going to Miami? I believe Janet told me right before they were ready to leave that they were going. Objection. Non-responsive. Hearsay. Move to strike. Overruled. And the answer's in? The answer's in. Janet, should I? No. No? Thank you. We'll move on to the next question. And did they, in fact, leave that day? That day or the next day, yes, sir. Within a day or two, yes. Did you have conversations, without getting into the content of them, did you have conversations with Janet Arvizo while she was in Miami? I believe she called me, yes, sir. 
Did you have conversations with any of the kids while they were in Miami? No, no, sir. Without getting into the content, did you know the purpose of the trip to Miami? I knew that they were going to be going there to do a press conference. Did you know, again, without getting into the content, did you know what the purpose of the press conference was? I'm not sure that I knew exactly at that time, but I knew very shortly thereafter what was going on with the documentary. Did you understand that it had something to do with the documentary? I believe I may have known, but I didn't know the specifics. All right. Was there, in fact, a documentary about Michael Jackson shown on television that you saw within a few days thereafter? Yes, sir, I did. And how did you know that it was going to be on television? I believe I saw something on TV that said it was coming on. Did you know in advance that that documentary would feature any of Janet Arvizo's children? I believe that there was some indication that, yes, that the children were going to be on there. Did you watch the documentary in its entirety? Yes, sir, I did. Did it, in fact, feature Janet Arvizo's children? It did, yes, sir. At the time you watched that documentary, was Janet Arvizo and her children in Miami? Were they in Miami? Yes, sir, they were in Miami. At some point in time were you contacted by reporters from any news agency, presumably reporters from the news agency? I wasn't contacted by them, but I did talk to several, two reporters, British reporters, at Janet's Soto Street apartment. Do you remember when that was? It was right, I guess right after, it was right before the documentary aired in the United States. It All right, and what did they want to do with you? They, well, when I was, I took Janet and the kids back to that Soto Street apartment. And Develin was at the apartment, and she said that, either two journalists or two guys had just knocked on the door asking for Janet. I saw them at the end of the hall. I walked down to ask them what they were, who they were with, and what they wanted. All right, what did they tell you? They said that they were with a British tabloid, and that they wanted to do a story on the family as it pertained to Michael Jackson. All right. Did they actually use the word, tabloid? I'm not sure if they did. I think I found that out later. That may have been your conclusion? It may have been, yes, sir. I can't imagine a reporter saying they're with a tabloid. Right. Did they say to you what it was exactly that they wanted to talk to you about? They didn't say specifically, no. They just said that they wanted to have a conversation, they wanted to do an interview with the family, and they wanted to take some photographs of the family. And did you understand this to relate to Michael Jackson in some fashion? Yes, sir. Did they tell you that that's what they wanted to do? Yes, sir, they did. Now, I believe you said this was prior to the screening of the documentary, Living With. Yes, sir, it was. Objection. Misstates the evidence. Sustained. Was this prior to the screening of the documentary? Yes, sir, it was. That you saw? The documentary we're talking about. Can you tell us the name of it, if you recall? Living with Michael Jackson. Was it a documentary that featured a man by the name of Martin Bashir? Yes, sir, it did. At the time you talked to these two reporters, did you have a sense of what was going on at that point? No, sir, I did not. Did you either request payment for an interview or did they offer you payment for an interview? Well, I said, again, we have to put it in context. They. Objection. Let me withdraw the question. Okay. Tell us what the discussion was with regards to payment. The discussion was, I asked them what was it that they were going, how they were going to compensate the family. Okay. For doing this. And he said, he said, we can probably give them four to five hundred dollars. What did you say? I said, I don't think that's going to happen. What did you understand? What did you think that they wanted to ask this family? I don't think I really knew. I believe that they were looking for something negative on Michael Jackson as it related to the children. Did you know anything negative about Michael Jackson at that time? No, sir, we did not. I did not. Had Janet Arvizo or her children at any time expressed any kind of negative comment to you about Michael Jackson up to that point? None. Were you aware as to whether or not the children had visited Neverland prior to that date? I knew they had a relationship with Michael Jackson. 
Did you have any reason to believe that relationship was anything but positive? That's all I believed it was. Did you tell those two reporters that? I did. All right. And was that before or after or during the conversation about payment? I'm not real clear. It was a back and forth about that. But I said, you know, if you're looking for dirt, you know, this, I don't believe there's anything negative to say. And they continued to ask for it. And they said, let me get back with my boss and we'll get back to you tomorrow. And I don't know if I gave him my phone number, or whether he got it, or, I probably gave it to him. Although some reporters tend to be able to find your phone number. All right. Did you ask for more money than three or four hundred dollars? No, I just said that wasn't going to be acceptable. And what did you mean by that? Well, I think I was, you know, I was intrigued by it. I have never had anybody come up asking to pay for any kind of story of any kind. And maybe I was, I was the one that initially asked, you know, is there any compensation for the family? But I think that I just thought that was the standard in the industry. I meant no malice by it. Did they tell you at any time during this initial interview that it had something to do with the documentary that featured in England? That featured what, sir? That was shown in England. That was aired on television in England. They mentioned something about a documentary in England, but they really were vague. And did you have any other independent information about it at that time? I did not. Did you have a follow-up conversation with them? I did. And when was the follow-up conversation? I believe it was the next day, or the day after that. Was this before or after Janet Arvizo and her children went to Miami? They had not left yet. Okay. Had you told Janet Arvizo about your initial conversation with these two reporters? I mean, while Janet and the family were in the apartment. But no, I did not talk to them specifically about any conversation I was having with the British reporters. All right. Do you know the name of the reporter or reporters who you talked to on this first occasion? David Gardner, Garner or Gardner, and Alec Byrne. And then you said there was a follow-up conversation over the telephone? Right. Perhaps a day or two later? Perhaps, yes, it was a day or two later. Do you recall with which person this conversation took place? I'm sorry, sir? With which person did you have this? My conversations were with David Gardner. Did Mr. Gardner talk more about wanting to have an interview with the family? Objection. Leading. I'll withdraw the question. What did Mr. Gardner say? He continued to say he wanted to have an interview with the family and that he was going to offer additional money, that his boss, I guess, had allowed something like $15,000, and that he wanted to bring them to a hotel or somewhere and do a full spread with them. And I declined that. You declined $15,000? I did. To say nice things about Michael Jackson? Well, you know, at that time I, I really, wasn't really in a position to make that decision. I knew Janet wouldn't do that. Objection. Move to strike. Well. Non-responsive. That's stricken. After the word, decision. That's stricken, the last sentence. Why did you say no? The more I thought about it, the less I liked the idea. Why? What was it that didn't appeal to you? $15,000 seems like a lot of money. Objection. Admonish the prosecutor not to make gratuitous remarks. Don't make gratuitous remarks. Laughter. I'm admonished. And that goes for all of you. Laughter. What about $15,000 didn't you want to have? Sir, I don't think, you know, at that time I remember going through the thought process of, you know, this would be, we could use this money. But, you know, the more I thought about it, these children were going to be on television, and it wasn't, it just wasn't going to be an appropriate thing to do to this family. All right. Now, in the course of this conversation, this was also prior to your viewing, living with Michael Jackson. That is correct, sir. Was it prior to your knowing about, living with Michael Jackson? Yes, sir. All right. Did you ever communicate with Janet Arvizo this particular offer? I did not. All right. Did you ever make any kind of a counteroffer for more money? No, I did not. Were there any other discussions with this reporter after this phone call? Yes, he, you know, after they left for Miami, I received a phone call from him. And I said, you know, he continued to want to have a conversation about doing an interview. 
And I told him, Sir, I can't, you know, the family is not even in the area now. There's nothing that I can do. He continued to call. He called again. Several months later, he says, Well, I'd just like to have a cup of coffee with you. I said, I'm not interested in that. And then when the raid on Neverland occurred, again he called me back, and in some ways made a threat. He said, You know, I haven't given your information to any other organizations. And I said, Sir, this is a military phone line. Please do not call here again. That was the last consideration I had with him. Have you had a conversation with any other reporters attempting to get a story from you? I have not had any detailed conversations. I have had a number of reporters contact me. How they get my number I do not know. But they called my office primarily. And they have shown up at various, at various locations like my apartment. Have you accepted money from anybody? Zero. We have not accepted a penny. For any kind of a story? For anything. Have you given a story to anybody? No, sir, I have not. Have you promised a story to anybody? No, sir. Have you made arrangements to accept money in the future in exchange for a story? No, sir. Do you have any intention of giving a story in the future? No, sir. Do you have any intention of accepting money for a story in the future? No, sir. Now, when they left for Miami, they, being Janet Arvizo and her children, when did you expect them to return? I didn't have a specific date, you know. They were. They knew Michael, and if that's what they were going to do, I wasn't going to get involved with all of that. But I didn't anticipate them being gone more than three or four days. When you saw, Living with Michael Jackson, did any part of that documentary disturb you? Yes, absolutely. The Objection. Relevance. Move to strike. And leading. Leading is overruled. Relevancy is sustained. All right. Where did they go? Did they return to Los Angeles after their trip to Miami? Yes, sir. They came back from Miami and I believe went straight to Neverland. All right. So they didn't come to Los Angeles? No, sir. Did? Not that I'm aware of. Were you contacted by Janet Arvizo? I was contacted by her on a couple of occasions. Now, during the course of the conversations that you had from her, can you tell us approximately how many phone calls you had from her while she was at Neverland? During this period of time? Yes. I can't tell you the specific number. But it was, it was several phone calls that I received from her over a two or three or four day period. Okay. How did she sound to you? She was distressed. Had she been distressed prior to going to Miami? No, not at all. Had there been any noticeable problems in your family prior to her going to Miami? No, sir. Were the kids healthy? Yes, sir. Were the kids in school? The kids were in school. In the course of her conversations with you over the telephone, did she tell you why she was distressed? She did not. Objection. Hearsay. That would be state of mind. And foundation. I think I'll allow the, yes, or, no, answer to whether or not she told him. That doesn't get to the real issue. Yes. Was that a yes or no? Could you repeat the question, please? Did she tell you, well, maybe the court reporter should repeat the question. In the course of her conversations with you over the telephone, did she tell you why she was distressed? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. What did she tell you was the reason for her distress? Objection. Hearsay. Relevance. Foundation. Relevance. Sustained. During the period of time that you had conversations with her, did she appear to you to be any less stressed as time went on? Yes, sir. At some point in time, did she return to Los Angeles? Yes, sir, she did. With her children? Yes, sir, with her children. Did they go to your home or some other location? They went to El Monte. They went to her mother's house. And did you visit them soon thereafter? I picked them up. Yes, sir, I did. How long did they stay in the Los Angeles area? Several days, probably three or four days. You're talking about at my apartment or at her mother's. At. Total? At her mother's and at your apartment. I would say three to four days, but that's speculation. During that period of time, were you getting any telephone calls at your apartment? 
She, Janet was talking to me. Oh, okay. What happened was that I went and picked her up from El Monte, brought her back to the house, and then I started receiving phone calls from a gentleman by the name of Frank. All right. Did Frank have a last name? Tyson, I believe. But at the time I think I only knew, Frank. I don't think I knew his last name. I How many conversations did you have with Frank Tyson? During that time, I didn't have many conversations with Frank. I might have picked up the phone and passed it to Janet. I believe that there was one, one phone call maybe that I actually talked to him in any detail. And the phone. Excuse me, I'm sorry. In that detailed conversation that you had, do you remember the content of that conversation? Objection. Hearsay. It would be a statement in furtherance, your honor. All right. I'll admit it for the limited purposes that we discussed earlier on the conspiracy charges. The statement in furtherance of the conspiracy. The question was, do you recall the content of that conversation? The content of the conversation was, is that Frank wanted to know what kind of car I drove. All right. And I asked him why he wanted to know what kind of car I drove. And he said his girlfriend in New York was doing some kind of survey on what people drove in Los Angeles. I thought it was quite strange. But at this point I didn't really understand what was happening, so I gave him that information. All right. And you told him what kind of a car you drove, is that correct? Yes, sir, I did. Did you ultimately have an opportunity to view surveillance tapes? Yes, sir, I did. And were they surveillance tapes of you? Yes, sir, they were. And were they surveillance tapes of you in the car that you described? Yes, sir, they were. Can you tell us how many phone calls were coming from Frank during the time that Janet Arvizo was staying at your house after her first return from Neverland? She was receiving phone calls continuously. What does that mean, continuously? Every 15 to 20 to 30 minutes. Throughout the day? Yes, sir. Were they always from Frank? They seemed to be from Frank. Were you able to hear any portion of the conversation? Janet was. Objection. Hearsay. Somewhat emotional. Non-responsive. Sustained. Were you able to hear any portion of the conversation? Yes or no? Yes. All right. Do you know if those conversations went on for long periods of time? They did. Without getting into the content of her end of the conversation, tell us what her mood was like, what her manner or her demeanor was like. She was emotional, she was crying, and she was sitting in the closet having these conversations with Frank and, I mean, I can tell you what I heard, but... but. Let's not go into that at the moment. You said she was sitting in the closet? She was, it's a long closet in the bedroom back in the back of the room. And she would sit in the closet. She was, she would be, she was very distressed. All right. She was crying. Were you able to hear her end of the conversation? I only heard bits and pieces, but, yes, sir. What could you hear her saying? She at that. Objection. Hearsay. As to her state of mind. Same objection. Let's see. She's, all right. I'll overrule the objection and allow her statement in for her state of mind. What did you hear, her comments? I heard her comments that she was very disturbed about two gentlemen's treatment of her, one being a gentleman named Ronald and another being a gentleman by the name of Dieter. Did she, in fact, return back to Neverland? She did, sir. Do you recall if a person, do you know a person named Brad Miller? Yes, sir, I met him one time. Can you tell us who Brad Will Miller is? As far as I understood, Brad Miller's a security detail for Michael Jackson. When and where did you meet Brad Miller? Brad Miller showed up at the house one evening during this period of time when Janet and the children were there. And I asked Janet who he was, and she said he was a security detail for Michael Jackson. He came in and did an audio taped interview with the family. Do you have a sense of when that was? If you don't know the date, say so. Yeah, I don't know the date. Do you know how many days Janet Arvizo and her children were back in Los Angeles by the time Brad Miller came by? Probably two or three days. Which residence was it that he came to? My residence on St. Andrew's Place. Did you have a conversation with Brad Miller prior to his arrival at the apartment? No, sir, I did not. Did you know in advance that he was going to be coming to the apartment? 
No, sir, I did not. Did you know in advance the purpose of his visit to the apartment? No, sir, I did not. When he came to the apartment, did you talk with him? I was cordial, offered him a drink. But no, sir, not other than that. Did he explain to you his presence in the apartment? No, I don't think so. Tell us what happened with Brad Miller when he was at the apartment. He showed up at the apartment. Janet seemed to be anticipating his arrival. I asked what he was coming for. She said, I guess they were going to do an interview of some type, an audio interview. I'm not even sure if that was said. But he showed up and there was a phone call. There was a phone call between him and, I guess Frank, because he passed the phone to Janet, and Janet talked to him, to Frank. And then they came in, and they sat down around the table. It's a coffee table in the living room. And they all circled around it, and they had an interview. Was that interview tape recorded, to your knowledge? Yes, sir, it was. Did you see the tape recording? Yes, sir. Who did you believe Brad Miller worked for? Michael Jackson. Did you have a sense of the purpose of that interview? I did not. Did you listen to any part of the interview? I was up and down throughout the entire time, so I really did not. I think. I assume it was in relation to the living with Michael Jackson, and that it was just to buffet his story that nothing had happened. All right. Did you at any time ask him any questions about what was going on? No, sir, I did not. Did you ask him any questions about the two men that Janet had expressed concern about? No, sir, I did not. Were you expecting that Janet Arvizo and the children would be returning to Neverland? You know what? At this point I'm not even sure I knew that. You know what? Janet had this relationship with Michael. Objection. Non-responsive. The answer was you didn't know? No, sir, I did not know. I'll strike the last sentence. Go ahead. At the time that you were in the apartment during this interview, did you not know whether they would be returning? No, sir, I did not. How long did that interview go for? Probably two hours, two hours and fifteen minutes, something like that. Do you have a recollection of any part of that interview, the content of that interview at all? Not really, sir, I don't. Did Janet Arvizo and her children return to Neverland after that interview? Yes, sir, they did. I believe it was like the next day. Your apartment on St. Andrew's Place was how large? It's about 1100 square foot, one bedroom. One bedroom and a living room? Yes, sir. And at times all of you were staying there at that apartment? Yes, sir. When they went back to Neverland, did you know in advance that they were going? I mean, at the last minute, I believe I knew that they were going. Do you know how they got to Neverland? Sure. Someone came and picked them up. You said, at the last minute. What does that mean? It means that I, you know, she wasn't telling me specifically what was happening. And I wasn't asking, so I think she might have told me that they were leaving, but I really, I'm not clear that they were leaving. All right. When they went back to Neverland, do you know if they went back during the day or in the evening? Seems to me that they went in the afternoon. And when was the next time you saw Janet Arvizo or her children? That same night Janet came back. Late at night. Without her children? Without her children. All right. What was her mood or her affect at that time? She was very emotional. Did you ask her where the children were? I assumed that they were still at the ranch. Did you talk about what had happened? She didn't want to talk about it. Do you know what day it was that she returned? Do you have a sense of it? Early February, but I really don't have a date. Do you know how much time had gone by since the Miami trip at this point that she came back? Maybe a week. Now, when she came back, how long was it before you saw the kids next? At that point, I didn't see them for probably three weeks. I don't know. It was a long time. Was there a meeting at your house involving the department of? I stand corrected, sir. Can I go back on the last statement? Yes. Go ahead. They, they apparently did a CPS, a Department of Child and Family Services interview after Janet left to go do the video that night. The next morning they all showed back up, and I did see the children but it was briefly. Now, you mentioned a couple of things we're going to talk about in order. Okay. First is the video. Okay. At some point in time, 
Did you become aware of the fact that Janet was, Janet Arvizo was going to be doing a video? I did. When did you learn about that? Well, when Janet came back by herself, she was very emotional. And then the next day Frank started calling again, just continuously. Let me stop you for one second. The same Frank who was calling the first time? Yes, sir, the same Frank. The person you mentioned as Frank Tyson? Frank Tyson. And you said before he was calling continuously? That is correct. Was he calling more continuously, less continuously, or about? I would say now it's more continuously. And what does that mean in terms of actually how many phone calls he was making? You know, I can't tell you a number of phone calls, but I can say he was calling every 15 or 20 minutes. I mean, I even told him, I would tell him certain times, she's not available. Call back later today, or, I'll have her call you. 15 minutes later he calls again. Did he tell you who he was in any of these phone calls? I don't think he did specifically. I knew he worked with Michael Jackson. Did he tell you why he was calling? Well, he always wanted to speak. Objection. Hearsay. It would be in furtherance of. First he has to answer the question. It was non-responsive. I'll have the court reporter read back the question. The question actually is, yes, or, no. Did he tell you why he was calling? That would be, yes, or, no. Yes. What did he say? Objection. Hearsay. Statement in furtherance of. I'm going to admit the statement with the same limited purpose for the last one. Okay. What did he say? He at one point asked me, how can I get Janet to come back up to the ranch? And another time he asked me, he said, we need her to sign a contract to do this video. And he said, we really have got to hurry on this, because it's going to air tomorrow. It's got to be in to be finalized by tomorrow. So he was really pushing that issue, and so I had a conversation with him about that. Had you, prior to that conversation, had you had a conversation with Janet Arvizo about a video? No, I had overheard her talking to Frank on the phone about it. I mean, at one point she was asking them to bring her children home. Objection. Hearsay. Reflects her state of mind. Just a moment. The question was, had you, prior to that conversation, had you had a conversation with Janet Arvizo about the video? Answer, no. He then proceeded to not answer. So I'll strike that after, no. You may ask another question. But you had some knowledge about what this video was about. Yes, sir, I believe I did. And did that knowledge, from what source was that knowledge? I believe mostly from Frank. And did Janet Arvizo speak with you about that video at all? No, sir. Did you overhear any conversation between Janet Arvizo and presumably Frank on the telephone? Yes, sir, I did. And did you overhear a conversation that specifically addressed the video? Yes, sir. She said she didn't want to do it. I'm sorry, she what? She said she did not want to do it. Move to strike. Non-responsive. And hearsay. Stricken after. Yes, sir. All right. When you had a conversation with Frank about this video, did you ask him any questions about it? Yes. I said, he said he wanted to do. Objection. Non-responsive. Sustained. Some of these questions really call for a, yes, or, no. Okay, sir. And then we can get into content thereafter. Okay. I believe the question was, did you have a conversation with Frank about this video? Yes, sir, I did. Alright, did Frank tell you what the video was about? Yeah, I believe he did, sir. What did he tell you? Objection. Hearsay. Statement in furtherance of. All right, I'll admit this for the limited purposes of the conspiracy. You may answer. I'm not clear exactly. I know Frank said some things to me about the fact that we needed to have this. They needed to do this prior to it going to the editor or something, to get it out there, and it was a rush to get it done. And that's really what I would say. Did he tell you or did you understand that this video would go on television? I did, yes, sir. Did you talk to him about this contract that he wanted Janet Arvizo to sign? Yes, sir, I did. What did you say to him? What is this contract? I'm sorry? I said, 
What is this contract? What is in this contract? And what did he say? He. Objection. Hearsay. Same response. You know, the last time you told me that, the response wasn't what you represented, so. Actually, I would refer the court to Overt Acts 11, 12 and 13, and I believe it does refer to those overt acts. Depends on what he says in his answer, doesn't it? That's the problem, not your question, counsel. Let me withdraw that last question. No, let's have a discussion for a moment. Okay. I just want to give you an example here. Did Frank tell you what the video was about? Yes, I believe he did. What did he tell you? Objection. Hearsay. Statement in furtherance of conspiracy. The court. All right. I'll admit it for a limited purpose. A. I'm not clear exactly. And then he went on to say something else. If you're going to offer a statement in furtherance of the conspiracy, then you need to know what statement he's going to make when you ask the question. Do you understand what I'm saying? What? Yes. I'm not going to agree in advance to that kind of response. I think the best thing we need to do is to withdraw the last question and proceed to another question. All right. I will do that. Did you have a conversation? Did you ask for a copy of the contract? I did. Yes, sir. All right. Did he send you a copy of the contract? No, sir, he did not. Did he agree to send you a copy of the contract? No, he did not. Did you have a conversation with Frank about payment for this video? Yes, sir. What did you say to him? Well, after I asked him to send the contract to me by email, and he kind of changed the subject, I asked him, what are you offering this family to do this? I had seen on TV that they were making money on this, this video, and I felt that they were taking advantage of this family. So I said, what are you offering them? He said, well, we're offering them protection. And that struck. Objection. Objection. Non-responsive. And I believe that statement. And hearsay. That's overruled. He said something to you about protection? Yes, sir, he did. What did he tell you about offering the family protection? He said he was offering the family protection. And I said, Frank, the family doesn't need any protection. Who are you protecting them against? Did he answer that question? He did not. He moved on to the next point. At any point in time during this conversation, did he tell you who the family needed protection from? No, sir, he did not. Did he tell you what kind of danger the family was in? No, sir, he did not. Did he tell you who were posing threats to the family? No, sir. And did you ask him those questions? I did. All right. Then you said he moved to the next subject? Yes, sir. Now, again, you had asked him for compensation for the family? Well, I, yes, I did. And he said he was going to give them a tutor. Well, we found out they didn't ever get any kind of schooling. Objection. Non-responsive. Hearsay. Move to strike. After, yes, sir, I did, I'll strike the rest of the answer. Did Frank offer you or Janet Arvizo or her children anything in exchange for this video? He said he was going to offer a college education, and a house. Well, they didn't need a house. And they're in 8th grade. They didn't need a college education. Objection. Move to strike. The last sentence is stricken. Let me. What did you say to Frank in response to that offer? I said, that's fine, Frank. What are you offering them monetarily? I was very suspicious of him at this point. Objection. Non-responsive. Move to strike. That's, that last remark is stricken. And the last answer. I'm striking the last three sentences, not the last one sentence. All right. He had made you an offer of a house? Yes, sir. All right. And you said no? Basically said no. Okay. Did you ask him for any monetary payment in exchange for that video? I asked him what he was offering financially or monetarily. And did he answer to that specific question? No, sir, he did not. Did he tell you whether or not they were going to be paid? No, he actually said, are you trying to blackmail us? Had you made any demands from him? No, sir. Were you personally familiar with any information that could be used for blackmail? 
No, sir. What did you tell him when he said that? Why are you saying that? That makes no sense. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about here. Did you tell him that you believed they were going to be profiting from this? I did. I said, you're going, you know, it's being blasted all over the TV that they're going to be doing this take two video, a response to the Martin Bashir, living with Michael Jackson. And they're advertising that the family's going to be on there, and you want her to sign this contract, but you won't show me the contract. And you, he wanted me to have her. Ab Objection. Non-responsive. Move to strike. Okay. After, there, where he started. You want me to sign the contract? I'll strike that. That's the last sentence. La did he ever send you a copy of the contract? No, sir, he did not. Did he ever read you a copy of the contract? No, sir, he did not. Did you ever have a discussion with Janet Arvizo about the video? No, sir, I did not. At some point in time, do you know if she actually did the video with or without her children? Yes, sir, I believe she did. And was that after this discussion with Frank? Yes, sir. Do you know how long after this discussion with Frank? He continued to call, and at some point Janet accepted it or moved. Objection. Non-responsive. Move to strike. The question was how long after, if you know. Within a day. Did the phone calls from Frank continue during that? The ruling on that is I will strike the answer as requested. Go ahead. Okay. During that period of time, that day that followed your conversation with Frank, did he continue to call the apartment? Yes, he did. And the calls we're talking about were to your apartment on St. Andrews? That's correct. Was there anybody else calling other than Frank? Not that I'm aware of. Do you know where the children were during this time? I believe they were at Neverland. Now, you had mentioned that you did see them during the course of an interview with the Department of Child and Family Services, is that correct? That is correct. All right. Can you tell us where that interview took place? It took place in my apartment. Were you there at any time during that interview? No, sir, I wasn't. Did you greet any of the people as they came? No, sir. Were you there earlier at the time that Janet Arvizo and the children arrived? About the time I was getting up to go to work, they arrived at the apartment. I was there a short period of time and went on to work. Do you know approximately what time that was that they arrived? Well, I get up probably about 6 o'clock in the morning, so that's my guess. So they were just arriving at 6 o'clock? That, it might have been a little earlier, but I'm not positive on that. Depends on what I had to do at work that day. Now, was Janet Arvizo arriving with them or had she already been at your apartment? No, she was arriving with them. Do you know when it was that she had left your apartment prior? The night before. The night before? Late at night. I don't know. Around 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Do you know if she drove herself or if someone came to get her? Someone came and got her. Do you know who that was? I don't. I'm not sure. I think I went outside. I know I went outside to help her get in the car, but I don't know who the driver was at this time. I can't put my finger on who it was. Were you there at the time that any of the people from the Department of Child and Family Services arrived? No, sir. Were you gone that entire day? I was gone the entire day. When you got back, who was present at your apartment? No one. Not even Janet Arvizo? Janet, I believe, may have been there. Did Janet Arvizo remain that night? I believe she stayed that night, and then either, yeah, I believe she left the next morning. Were the kids gone already? They were already gone. By the time you got home that day? Yes, sir. That night, what was her mood like? I don't really remember. Did Janet Arvizo say anything to you about Brazil? Yes, sir, she did. What did she say? Objection. Hearsay. Sustained. Did you know if there was a trip to Brazil in the planning? Yes, sir, I did. Was Janet Arvizo enthusiastic about going to Brazil? No, sir. Objection. Hearsay. State of mind. Calls for a conclusion. Sustained. Did she say to you that she was enthusiastic about going to Brazil? Objection. Hearsay. 
sustained, and leading. How long were they gone after they left, after this meeting with the Department of Child and Family Services? About three weeks. A long period of time? Yes, sir, a long period of time. Did you know in advance they were going to be gone that long? No, sir, I did not. Did you have conversations with Janet during that period of time? Yes, sir, I did. Over the telephone? Yes, sir. What was her mood like over the telephone? Distressed. Disturbed. When was the next time that you saw her? The next time that I saw her was at a nail salon. All right. Explain that to us. Well, over that period of time Janet had been calling, and she was hanging up on me, and very short conversations, and very disturbed. Objection. Non-responsive. Move to strike. It's responsive, but it calls for a narrative, so I'll sustain the objection. Okay. During the course of your conversations, would you describe the nature of the conversations you had with her? Without getting into the content of them, just the nature of them. The nature of the conversations was, is. Go ahead. I can tell you how she was, appeared, how she felt. She was. Objection. Non-responsive. I'm not sure I understand the question. Let me withdraw the question. Yeah. Because I think the question might be difficult to answer. Did she sound concerned over the telephone? Yes. Objection. Leading. Overruled. Next question. Were they long conversations? Not normally, no. Did she express concerns to you in the course of these conversations? Yes, sir. Objection. Leading and asked and answered. Overruled. Next question. What did she say to you that she was concerned about? Objection. Hearsay. Her state of mind. I'll admit it for that purpose. What did she say to you that she was concerned about? Well, she said that she was not being able to see her children, that they were following her around wherever she went off Neverland, that she was, either had a chaperone or that somebody was following her. At one time when she was in a hotel. Objection. Narrative. Non-responsive. Sustained. I'm going to instruct the jury that that statement that was admitted just now was not admitted for the truth of the matter asserted by Janet, but for her state of mind as she related to him. Next question. Do you know if during this period of time Gavin was seeing a doctor on a regular basis? Yes, he was. How often was he seeing his doctors? I'm not clear. I think probably every month or so. Do you know when his appointments were around that time? I don't really. I know that he was having them scheduled, but I wasn't sure when he had to go. All right. And I think you said the next time you saw her was at a beauty parlor. Is that right? That is correct. How did you happen to see her at a beauty parlor? She called me at work and, I hadn't talked, I hadn't actually seen her in a long time, and she called me at work and said. Objection. Hearsay. To a juror, bless you. Sustained. Did she notify you where you, where she was? She called me at work. Did you go to that location? Yes, sir, I did. Was anybody else there, was she there at the location? Yes, she was. Was anybody else at that location? When I came in, she was sitting there by herself. All right. At some point, without getting into the content, did you have a conversation with her? Yes, sir. Is this the first time that you'd seen her in a few weeks? Yes, sir. Was any, and then I think you said somebody else came. Who came? Objection. Misstates the evidence. Withdraw the question. Who did you see then? I saw Vinny and Gavin come in the back door of the nail salon. Is Vinny somebody you knew prior to that day? No, sir. Were you introduced to him at that time? I was either introduced or he introduced himself. I'm not positive. I'm not clear. Can you describe Vinny to us? He would be a white male. About how old? Young. Younger. How old is, younger? 25. I don't, that's just speculation. Did he tell you who he was, Vinny? I'm not sure. Was there a discussion with Vinny about Janet Arviso returning to Neverland? Objection. Hearsay. Statement in furtherance of. All right. 
all admitted for the limited purpose in furtherance of the conspiracy. Could you ask me the question again, please? Go ahead, the court reporter. Was there a discussion with Vinny about Janet Arvizo returning to Neverland? Yes. And what did Vinny say about that? Same objection. Okay. Same ruling, then. Go ahead. He said that, he said, no, you can't do that. And I said, are you saying that I cannot take her out of here? And he said, I got to check on that. And he walked outside and immediately got on his cell phone, followed by Gavin. Gavin followed him? Correct. What was Gavin's behavior like at that time? Cocky. Cocky? Yes. Explain that, please. I don't know. He was, it's hard to explain. He was, just walked in. He strutted in with Vinny. And it wasn't the sweet, loving Gavin that I knew. Objection. Non-responsive. Move to strike. Just a moment. Overruled. The answer is. Hold on just a moment. Here, if you would, please. Go ahead. Thank you. May I proceed? Yes. All right. You described Gavin's response. Was Gavin behaving differently than he had been prior to, well, prior to, the early part of February when they went to Miami? Yes, he was. In what way was he behaving differently at this point? Again, he was acting very cocky. He, kind of rude, actually. Did he greet you at all when he saw you? I don't think he wanted to see me. I don't think that he, he was very surprised when he saw me there. And he may have greeted me, but he was certainly not a loving, it was almost like, what are you doing here? Your relationship with him prior to Miami, how would you describe that relationship? Father-like. You had a good relationship with him? Very good relationship. Now, we were talking about Vinny and his comments. He said that he had to go out and call somebody. Did he call somebody? Yes, sir, he did. Did he continue to have a conversation with you while he was on the phone with that person? Yes, sir. I asked him, I asked him, you know, is there a problem here? And he said, oh, no, there's no problem. I'm working on that right now. Did he say anything about where Janet Arvizo or Gavin would be going? Objection. Leading. Overruled. You may answer. Did he say where she was going to go? Read the question back. Let me redo that question, if I can. Please. Did he say anything to you about where he wanted Janet Arvizo or Gavin to go? He didn't. Same objection. Did you say anything to? Just a moment. The objection was overruled. The answer was, he didn't. Next question. Was there a discussion involving Vinny about where everybody would be going? It wasn't Vinny. It was, Gavin came in after that and said something to me. All right. In Vinny's presence? No, Vinny was still outside. Okay. Where finally did Janet go? Janet left with me. And where did Gavin go? Gavin left with Vinny. To your understanding, where? Back to Neverland. The other two children, were they there? They were still at Neverland, no, sir. And did you go home with Janet? Yes, sir, I did. And, home, is the St. Andrew's residence? Yes, sir, it was. What was Janet Arvizo's mood like when you were back at the house at St. Andrew's? She was distressed. She was saying there was a problem. All right. Did you make an effort at some time to find out? Objection. Objection. Non-responsive. Move to strike. Sustained. I'll strike the last sentence of what she said. Did you make an effort with Janet Arvizo to get the children back from Neverland? Yes, sir. What did you do? Well, at one point I called her father, and said, I want to go to Neverland and get these children out of there. And then at, and he, well, I don't believe that he was. Objection. Hearsay. Tending to explain their actions. The question was what did he do? So I will overrule the objection and strike the last sentence. All right. Ultimately was there a decision made to make a phone call by somebody in the family to Neverland? Yes. Janet called someone. Either Frank or Vinny. All right. And what did she represent to them? Objection. Hearsay. Explaining the conduct. Explaining what conduct? Hers. Sustained. 
Were the children returned to either your house or some other location? When did you? I'm drawing a blank. I'm not sure I understand what's going back and forth here. When was the next time you saw the children? The next time I saw them was the next night at her, Janet's parents' house. Were you present at the time any phone calls were made to Neverland by either Janet or her parents? No, sir. Who brought the children to her parents' house? I don't, I do not know, because we waited for them to arrive before we went to her parents' house. When you got there, were they still there, the people from Neverland? No, sir, they were not. Whoever had brought them there had left by that time. That is correct. Describe Gavin's behavior at the time that you got there. Gavin didn't want to see me. He stayed back in the back room. There was some crying coming from the back room. Objection. Non-responsive. Hearsay. Move to strike. Overruled. Who was crying in the back room? I believe it was Develin. Did you talk with Gavin at all? No, I did not. Was he friendly to you? No, sir. Did he talk with you at all during that day? No, no, sir. Was there any discussion about returning to Neverland? No, sir. Did any of the kids ask to be returned to Neverland? Objection. Leading and asked and answered. Overruled. You may answer. Go ahead. I'm sorry? Court reporter. Did any of the kids ask to be returned to Neverland? The only thing I remember is they said that Michael, I mean Gavin couldn't see me, because if he did, he couldn't return to Neverland to see Michael. Gavin said that? Yes, sir, he did. How would you contrast Gavin's behavior at that time as against his behavior prior to the Miami trip? Objection. Improper opinion. Vague. Overruled. You may answer. Go ahead. Night and day, it appeared to me he'd been brainwashed in some way. Objection. Just tell us what his behavior was. He was vague, he was angry. Objection. Just a moment, just a moment. Yes, sir. The last response is stricken. The jury's admonished to disregard it. Ask him another question. Just tell us what his behavior was like at this time. Angry. In what way? He was just mean, he was yelling. Are we talking about the night that he was at? That night and even beyond. Even beyond. He became mean. He was using curse words. Objection. Vague. He had never done before. Just a moment. Yes, sir. Vague and non-responsive. I'm going to strike the last sentence again. The problem here is that you're required to listen to the question and just answer it. And every answer you give, you add something to it, which causes counsel to object and me to rule, which is causing a great disturbance in your testimony. If you want to keep doing it, you can. But you can't imagine how it sounds to everybody else. So I'm going to admonish you to pay attention to what the question is, and then just answer the question. Nothing further. All right? Yes, sir. Was he saying things or using speech different from the type of speech he used prior to the Miami trip? Yes, sir. In what way? He was using curse words. He had not used curse words before in the house? No, sir. Was this in the presence of his grandmother? I don't remember if it was that night. But he did over the next few days period of time. Did his behavior in time return to what you considered to be normal, what it was prior to the Miami trip? Over several months, yes, sir. Did you and Janet Arviso put the boys into some kind of tutoring? Yes, sir, we did. What tutoring program was that? It's called JEI Learning Center. We immediately put them in after they got back from Neverland. Was that a private school? No, it's not a private school. It's just to assist children who, who need additional assistance getting their level up in a certain area. What was the purpose for doing so, putting them into JEI? Because they had been out of school for almost two months and we wanted to bring their skills back up to the level they should have been. And did they attend JEI tutoring? Yes, sir. Did the boys resume their activities with military scouting? With the sea cadets, yes, sir. When did that resume? Almost immediately. Are they still active in military scouting? Yes, sir, they are. Objection. 
Relevance. Overruled. The answer was, yes. Yes, sir, they are. And that involves attendance at military camps how frequently? They go every week, about every Sunday. And then they have field exercises that they attend probably every month or two months. They're over the weekends. The are all three children living with you today? Yes, sir, they are. Would you describe Gavin's behavior today? Objection. Relevance. Asked and answered. I believe. Sustained. Is he still involved in scouting today? Objection. Relevance. Could we approach sidebar? The. Is that a, yes? No. I'm trying to, I'll overrule the objection. I think that was asked and answered. But rather than waste time looking, go ahead. All right. Yes, sir. They're still involved with it, with that. Thank you. I have no further questions. All right. We'll take our break two minutes early. Give me time to recover. Laughter.